So another question that's related to, of course, climate is the question of uh, auto workers and uh, cars and technology. Tell us what your plans are for, for instance, the UAW, what you're doing uh, this week, I believe. Is this, are you making an exclusive announcement on the Katie Halper show? Have you announced this? No, yet? I already put it on Twitter. Oh, the other night. I'll be going right. tomorrow morning. I would have okay. gone on Monday, but it was Yom Kippur. Today, the president was there. Yes. Right back at you. I didn't want it to look today like it was about me and the president being there. That theater is not what's important. What's important here is the UAW. So I will be going tomorrow morning. I, uh, I read that Trump will also be there tomorrow morning. So that'll be interesting. But I, I hear, I'm, I'm not quite sure what's going on because I think he's going, I'll be at a Wayne plant. Um, but I hear that he's going somewhere where they're not actually striking. So I don't uh, know what, what Trump is doing, but I will be there and I will have the opportunity to uh, talk uh, to workers and to the public about why I, not only why I support the UAW, but also why I recognize, how I recognize, that I recognize that the struggle of the UAW auto workers is no different and is part of a larger picture of a really rebalancing of the American economy. Uh, we're living in revolutionary times. We're living, I think we're living in a soft revolution already. And I'm reminded of, of JFK's line that those who make peaceful revolution impossible make violent revolution inevitable. And I hope, whether it has to do with the w WGA strike, whether it has to do with Amazon, and, you know, I, I give credit where credit is due. I mean, there are some actions within the Biden administration that are pushing back. And listen, this is not about the horse race. This is about getting things done for the American people. And... Um, uh, the the fact this revitalization of the labor movement um, is is absolutely essential. I believe that there needs to be an inside outside strategy. There has to be a, a president who is genuinely in act as well as word in always pro labor, and there has to be the outside strategy of the labor movement. Uh, you see it happening, and you know, Katie, I'm old enough to remember. First of all, you know, my father was a Detroit labor organizer with the CIO before it was the AFL-CIO. And my brother worked for Cesar Chavez in the late 60s and I was raised in a home. Um, if you ever cross a picket line, don't bother to come home. Mm. That was the home I was raised in. I was, even though I didn't go to the same camp you went to, right. that was the kind of home I, I was right. raised in. Um, but I am old enough to remember when things started to change in this country. When I was growing up, labor was an indisputable serious political force. And when Reaganomics trickled down economics, neoliberalism, when all of that ascended, the demonization of labor, organized labor was so much a part of that. That's not to say labor didn't have its own issues at all. However, uh, to, to watch how they were squashed, how they were demonized and minimized, peripheralized, how the right to work state laws came into being, and now to watch this revitalization is I think very encouraging, very encouraging. Hmm. For all of what do you think of Biden's position on the railway strike? Ultimately, more than not, he sided, he sided with the railroad companies. I think, you know, whether it has to do with that particular strike, whether it has to do with what happened in East Palestine, the tyrannous, the tyrannous power. And I use, I do not use the word tyranny lightly, but we are talking about corporate tyranny in many of these cases. And I think that uh, the railroad uh, companies are one of them. Uh, even when Pete Buttigieg went to uh, East Palestine, finally, um, and he sounded like a whining child. Every time we try to regulate, you won't let us. What is this? You won't let us. I'm so tired, you know, whether it's the Republicans, when they're in power, um, don't even care to fight. In fact, they're there to enable the corporate powers. But to hear Democrats go, they won't let us, is just enough to make you want to inject them with some spine, which is why I'm running. It's going to take a woman in there, isn't it? Yeah, perhaps. I think. Yeah. Um, and certainly uh, a woman who's uh, good on women's rights, as opposed to, say, Hillary Clinton, who, when she was running against Bernie, of course, famously did not support the fight for 15 and people who care about economics and... Um, Women's rights know, of course, that most minimum wage earners are women and women of color. So that was an interesting example of Hillary Clinton uh, 
not actually being pro-woman. But someone said, okay, what are we going to do about the people in East Palestine? Oh, the East Palestine thing is actually getting worse rather than better. One of the first things I would do is declare, officially declare a disaster. You know, in Libby, Montana, because of a disaster that occurred there, the Medicare right. for all was given. This is what should happen. First right. of all, we should we have universal health care anyway. Yeah. You know, this is the thing, Katie. The problem with the, with the East Palestine, Ohio, first of all, it's not an accident that Norfolk Southern what, that that railroad car was through a, a, a um, was through a neighborhood like that to begin with, because you know, and, and with all credit to Obama, Obama had tried to regulate those kinds of toxic chemicals. He was not able to. This is why we were talking before about the tyrannous effect of of these railroad companies. So what they do is these are basically considered sacrifice zones where people do not have the kind of financial or political leverage to fight back and say not in our neighborhood. So the biggest problem when something like a, a, an East Palestine disaster occurs is that people have no capacity to absorb it. So if you're already living on the edge financially, paycheck to paycheck, if you don't have uh, health care, the, the, it's not only the, the derailment to begin with. In addition to the derailment, there was the fact that then they did the burnoffs that were not permitted. Some, let me tell you something. Somebody should be prosecuted. I would like to see somebody indicted. Some, somebody should be tried on criminal charges for what Norfolk Southern did and continues to do to the people of East Palestine. I did a panel the other day. It's going to be on sometime soon uh, with Savage Joy Marie, who I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. And some of the, uh, the people in East Palestine, um, some of whom I met when I was there, um, people who were told, who, some of whom were told that their homes are contaminated. They, they, they're losing their teeth, they have constant nosebleeds, they have migraines all the time, they are told their homes are contaminated, and then being told by, by Norfolk Southern, we'll give you $1,000. We'll give you $1,000. These home, how were they ever going to sell their homes? Some of these people's homes were what they you know, had, to, had to save in their lives to have these homes. And also another thing, Norfolk Southern is treating it like we only, we only uh, have responsibility to people a mile out. The problem goes over seven miles out into Pennsylvania. There are people who cannot go back to their homes. One woman on this panel, uh, they have said, we are going to cover your rent where you are until March of 2024. And then where are these people going to go? They can't go back to their homes. They have been to Washington. They have spoken to senators. They have talked about the fact that, um, and uh, the women on this panel were saying, some of these senators said, we had no idea you were sick. They have gone to the EPA. They recorded a... Um, uh, they recorded a session with the head of the EPA, Michael Reagan, Sherry Brown. They're not doing anything. They just give these people the runaround. And it's horrifying. <clears throat> and when you ask them as president, what could I do? <clears throat> Declare a disaster. That's what we need is for the president to declare a disaster. It's like the president declaring a climate emergency. Once the president does an official declaration of a disaster, then everything that is necessary to actually provide help for these people is automatically provided. The president did uh, come out with an executive order. And the executive order mainly says we're going to collect data. And, you know, my interest isn't in their freaking data. It's in the human despair and the human suffering mm -hmm. that is created by these situations. Um, it's horrifying neglect and abandonment of the people of this country uh, that we see in East Palestine. And one of the reasons I hope I win this election is to be able to help them in a way that they're not being helped now. And I can't imagine they're being helped in the future if uh, either Trump or Biden is president inaugurated in 2025. Yeah, Biden didn't even have the decency to pander to these people by going Where's, there. Where are the votes there? 